that's we're, we're just getting through this one easily. Um, I'll quickly get into the next one, which is what setback do I need for the open carport concession? This is a, a recent inquiry. I see some laughter already. Fantastic. Laugh at my jokes, please, because we're on video today. Um, what setback do I need to the open carport concession? Uh, an inquiry wanted some clarification over 3716 in volume two, um, specifically about the open carport concession. Um, 3716 contains requirements which inhibit spread of fire from one class one building to the other. We don't care about the class 10, that can burn, that's fine. We're just stopping the fire spread from one class one to the other. And that is directly, uh, directly from performance requirement P2.3.1. So the class 10A building, the class one is of course the, the house or the boarding house, and the class 10A could be the shed, could be a, a deck, could be the carport. And that's why we have provisions, deemed to satisfy provisions in 3.7.1. And these refer to tables such as 3716, figure 3716, where we achieve this performance requirement by stopping the fire getting from one class one to another by having physical separation between the two, as in the top example there, or installing walls which have an FRL, which prevent the fire spread from getting from one class one to the other via the 10A. When we use separation, the required setback is either 900 millimetres from a boundary or 1.8 metres from another building when it's on the same allotment. So of course the 900 from the boundary, I do that on my side and then my neighbour does the 900 on his side, we get the full 1.8. That's how we, how we do it and this is all in accordance with 3714 measurement of distances, which is found right up the front of 3.7.1. And it sets out how distances in this part of the code are measured. And all these distances, note, are taken from the external wall of the building, from the external wall of the building to the boundary or the next building. <clears throat> so for these class 10As in this diagram here, the measurement is taken from the wall, let's call them garages, the measurement is taken from the wall of the garage. Not the, not the eave, not the gutter, but taken from the wall in accordance with 3.7.1.4, right here at the start of 3.7.1. Now carports, they present a lower fire hazard than, than garages and other class 10A buildings. So we get this concession in 3.7.1.6, and we, you may have heard this called the open carport concession. Under this concession, you have to have at least two sides open and at least one third of the perimeter as open. That is the most boring ringtone that I've heard on the whole. It's, you, could have a, you could have a song, you could have all sorts of things. I've got a lovely song when my wife rings me. Just ring, ring, ring. That's, look, look it up. Um, sorry, sorry, thank you. We have to have at least two sides open, at least one third of the perimeter open. And to be open, you can't have a wall. And also there's some, cover, there's some things about the roof covering. The roof covering, besides what it's made out of, has to be at least 500 millimetres from another building or the allotment boundary. This is all in accordance with 3716D. Now this 500 millimetres, what it does, it gives a chance for smoke and heat to escape through the roof. So that the, you've got one class one, another class one, you come to the 10, you've got this 500 millimetres, the smoke and heat escapes rather than getting condensed and then um, causing the adjacent class one to catch a light. So let's say, is this why you laughed before, sir? It's just how badly drawn it is. <laughs> just good. Oh, okay. I'll come, I, well, I'm glad you've come today. Thank you for coming. Um, the carport, this carport's open on two sides. The far side's the wall, probably the house, uh, so that's not open. The front has the garage door, so it's not open. However, the rear, is open, there's nothing constructed there. And the side here, as long as we're 900 millimetres away, oh sorry, we're 500 millimetres for the open carport concession, if it is an open carport, but yes it is, um, because we're less, we also meet the third rule. Uh, this side, so long as the boundary is far away or an adjacent building is far away, is also open. Now note how these are measured. This is all in accordance with 3716D. Um, Unlike those measurements that we're used to using, you go through all through figure 3716 and use the rules set out in 3714, where you measure from the external wall. This diagram shows us how it's done. It's straight from volume two. 
It's measured from the roof covering to the closest part of the adjacent building. So for the class one to the house, it's actually measured from the gutter in this case, not the wall, because we're not applying 3.7.1.4. We're applying 3716D, which sets out that it's the 500 millimetres distance from the closest part of the adjacent building or from the boundary, of course, on the right. Another important thing to note when applying the open carport concession is that it doesn't double up. We're used to my house, neighbour's house, I've got my 900, he's got his 900, we've got our 1.8, and when you put the buildings on the same allotment, we double up and get that 1.8. The, the open carport concession doesn't double up. Let's call them garages on the left-hand side there. We've got our 1.8 metres wall-to-wall -wall in accordance with 3714, the measurement of distance. On the right, we have two open carports. The 500 millimetres doesn't double up. When I operate, when I consider this carport, I just simply have to have the closest part of the roof or the closest part of the adjacent building, not less than 500 millimetres away, tick. When I consider this carport, I have to be sure that the adjacent one is not less than 500 millimetres away, all in accordance with 3716D, tick. So the 500 millimetres doesn't double up. Important to note, and it all comes down to getting your head out of the 3714 and applying the wave right applying in 3716.